Hey there, English Expanders! It's me, Agnes, and today I'm going to tell you three tips uh, to study vocabulary more effectively. Um, last week I told you that I'm uh, Agnes Jubanoj and I've been an English teacher for 14 years now. And um, I also have a blog. I am the writer of the blog uh, called English Expander. So you know me from there. Uh, my blog, you can find my blog at blog.englishexpander.net although it's in Hungarian, but you have many, many useful tips there in, uh, uh, for using for your uh, speaking exam. Um, I'm preparing uh, students for the speaking test. Um, and not just I'm preparing, but I've been preparing students for the speaking test for many, many years now. And I also have an online program called Speaking Exam Pass, uh, which prepares students for the speaking test uh, for the major uh, language exams. And I can tell you that now we have seven successful students who did their speaking tests with the help of the program. So they achieved um, B2 or C1 level uh, speaking test pass results with the help of the program. And um, I also uh, promised you to give a name to this show and oh, I was thinking and uh, some of you suggested uh, some name for the show but you know what my page is called English Expander and I th uh, thought my show would be called Expand Your English. So from now on we call the show Expand Your English but let me uh, let me explain to you what expand and expander mean because some of you might not know because you're too young for that what that means if you were born in the 1970s or 1980s uh, maybe and your father uh, was a, a sporty type maybe at home you can find an expander do you know what it is uh, usually men used it to make their chest muscles uh, stronger. You used it like that. You took it, took it by the, by that, the both sides, and you pulled that expander right there. And then you, it was so strong that you couldn't pull it any longer. And then you released it. And that's expander. So um, expand your English means make your English bigger make your English, you know, more effective, right? This is why I call, call my show Expand Your English. Right, uh, last time I got lots of comments from you. Thank you so much. But today, please try to comment uh, only in English, right? So, because it will not only do you good, uh, so it, it will do good, uh, good for you that when you uh, comment in English, it's good practice for you, you keep writing and so on, blah, blah, blah. But it's also, but it also helps me because I don't have to translate your comments from Hungarian to English uh, to mention your name and comment in the show. So please, from now on, comment only in English. And as uh, usual, uh, we have a question of the day. And today's question is, which in English word uh, is the most difficult for you to remember. Either its spelling is difficult for you or its meaning, you never know what it means. Uh, let me give you an example. You know what? I could give you tons of examples. Uh, I've got a lot of uh, difficult words, although I'm supposed to be a pro. <laughs> but for years, I couldn't spell grammar. <laughs> and that's very funny, in my opinion. Uh, and Challenge and uh, Manchester also gave me a hard time. Uh, but of course, uh, because I've seen them written down so many times, now I can uh, write them down uh, and they are not difficult for me anymore. However, I still have difficulties with new words like overwhelm or overwhelming, which I keep 
hearing from, um, from the podcasts I listen to. Uh, I don't find overwhelm difficult because I can't write it down. So it's not the spelling which is difficult for me, but the translation to Hungarian. So I can't translate it to Hungarian in a sentence. I know what it means. I know what it looks like in a sentence. I know how to use it, but I can't come up with a good translation for overwhelm. What about you? Do you have difficult words uh, which are difficult for you to write down or to remember? Now, uh, uh, let me tell you an example sentence uh, which I keep hearing from, uh, from the podcast I told you. I don't want my audience to be overwhelmed by this topic. I don't want my audience to be overwhelmed by this topic. Now, I brought you a monolingual dictionary, my favorite. Uh, the Longman Exams Dictionary, and in that one we can find the English definition for overwhelm, which means uh, if work or problem overwhelms someone, it's too much or too difficult to deal with. To, so, uh, la, uh, we were overwhelmed by the number of applications. So, overwhelm means too much for somebody uh, a thing is too much or people are too much. Now, what are you, your uh, difficult English words which give you a hard time? And for today, I prepared how to look at the comments. And so now I, <laughs> I will try to do my best and uh, to look at the comments. Uh, well, yeah, more or less, I can prepare <laughs> for that, okay? And uh, I'm going to find the comments, I promise. Yeah, you know, I'm not from your uh, laptop, uh, not from my laptop, so I'm from my phone. I go live from my phone, so I can look at the comments from my laptop, but it's a bit slower uh, than expected and uh, takes a long time. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Jozef uh, commented expander uh, what it means in Hungarian. It's something like that. It has got three of the kind, I don't know the word for it, what you wrote, three in a row and you need it to expand it. All right. Um, uh, okay, you, you Zoli writes about English and Hungarian comments, but I would be very thankful if you wrote in English because uh, I I think in English, I'm in an English mode now and it disrupts me when I have to jump up and forth uh, between the two languages. Uh, all right, uh, congratulations <laughs> to Zoli who was accepted or uh, to the university, congrats to you. Like, but you don't, you're not writing about uh, the words that Tell, uh, keep, uh, give you a hard time. So please go on with your comments. Okay. Uh, so for me, it was grammar and uh, also, yeah, for me, it was grammar and Manchester and now it's overwhelming, which gives me a hard time. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hate, height and weight. Uh, Jozef uh, commented, height and weight, yes, they look the same, almost one letter difference, but the meaning is completely different, but that's right, uh, and you, you pronounce them differently, right? Uh, no, you, you would like to pronounce it the same, height, but not white, but weight, okay? Right, uh, that was a good example, thank you very much. Right, uh, now... Um, I know that it's really hard for you uh, to find the time and motivation to learn English vocabulary. Uh, but if you forget studying English vocabulary like you used to back at school and uh, you find some fun ways uh, to study new words, you will succeed. And now let me give you three tips on how to be how to make uh, studying vocabulary more fun, okay? Uh, uh, my first tip is never learn a single word by itself. So never write 
down a word, only one word and one Hungarian meaning. Learn groups of words that travel together. Okay, for example, instead of memorizing bunch, you should memorize a bunch of roses or a bunch of people, right? Uh, instead of rem remembering the word occur, you should uh, study the word if problems occur or if any problem occurs. Okay, when you, uh, when you remember phrases instead of single words, you ensure that you know how to actually use them in real context, in sentences and in real life. Now, let me give you some more examples. If you want to study the word appointment, now how would you study it? Make an appointment with somebody or have an appointment with somebody. If you want to study the word uh, arrange, you should study the, the, the expression arrange a meeting for somebody. So in that way, your English would be much more fluent and uh, the words would be easier for you to remember. Um, I'm sure most of you studied vocabulary at school like this. You opened your vocabulary book and you wrote the, the English word on the left and the Hungarian on the right. Am I right? So on one page you had 50 different words you couldn't remember the meanings, you couldn't remember the forms, you could only remember where it was in your vocabulary book. Yes, it was at the top right corner, I remember. But what was the meaning? How could I write it down? Uh, you forgot it because you visualized where it was in your vocabulary book. Now, what I suggest everybody, uh, how they should study uh, vocabulary or groups of words is different. My method is to encourage everybody to use sentence cards. They are small cards uh, like that. You should cut them with scissors, right? I know it's tiring, but there are tons of websites where you can create your own flashcards or word cards. Um, and uh, my sentence cards look like this. On one uh, side, you write the English uh, meaning, like uh, you don't write career, but you write have a career in medicine, right? And you turn the page or you turn the piece of paper and you write the Hungarian meaning of the phrase there, right? So far, so good. But after writing like 10 or 20 sentence cards, I would study them like that. First, I would read the English sentence, then I would try to translate that to Hungarian, but mainly I would turn the page to the Hungarian meaning and I would uh, uh, study, uh, no, I would translate the Hungarian to English and I, will, I would go as long as my uh, sentences are not correct, okay? And when I studied one sentence card, I put it aside and let's go back to let's go back to a new one or let's start with a new one. And after finishing 10 cards, I would go back to the beginning and study it again and again until I know them uh, by heart. Okay, that's my method of studying vocabulary. I suggest uh, every student should forget uh, vocabulary books the old ones that we used at school. Now, uh, I told you a lot of expressions that I studied together. Now, tell me more phrases or expressions that you studied together and you still remember them because you studied them together. Uh, let me tell you some of my very famous examples. For example, I studied opportunity, but then I also studied golden opportunity together or Instead of opinion, I studied in my opinion or uh, honest, to be honest, okay? Now tell me some more examples uh, that you studied together and I'm trying to pull out your comments. Right, um, okay, um, yes, yes, yes. You wrote a lot of comments but I can't see. Um, 
Agnes told me it's a good idea, the sentence card, I guess. Mm. Kitty says it's, uh, it's very true because in real English communication we can use a linking words, not just single words. That's right. Linking words are also very important. Um, yes, right. Please tell me some groups of words that you learn together, okay? Um, try to tell me groups of words like career in medicine or make an appointment. Okay, uh, now I can't see any comments, but uh, let's, get to, let's get back to the comments at the end of the show, right? <laughs> okay, uh, now um, I'm going to tell you my second tip, which is very similar uh, to the one I gave you last time, but it's a bit different. So, listen while you, listen while you read. What do I mean by that? A really smart decision is to listen to the audiobook uh, read in English while reading the same book and it works. So you take an English book and at the same time while you're reading it, you listen to the audiobook read by uh, a native English speaker. I've done this a million times because uh, my favorite writer is English. Uh, he's called Terry Pratchett. I don't know if you know him. Uh, unfortunately, he died uh, two years ago. Uh, he is he is an awesome, he was an awesome writer. He wrote fantasy books, but really funny fantasy books. And I loved his style. I loved his readings. And, uh, but, but they were really hard for me to understand for the first time. And then I uh, came to know that there were audiobooks with these books. And I started listening to them and then I uh, also read them at the same time. And then the books came to life. And I learned so many good expressions from that uh, experience that, uh, and, and it gave me such a, a, a sense of achievement and success that vocabulary went into my head immediately. And I, because I read the form of the vocabulary and I listened to the pronunciation at the same time, I learned them uh, quicker than uh, usual. Um, now, if you think you're, you're not ready to read native English books, course you have other options you should try reading graded readers what are they these Oxford Penguin and Macmillan and tons of other publishers uh, publish uh, readings which are easier readings for language learners you can buy them in Libri or in uh, bookstores but you can also uh, borrow them from the library and they come with an audio version as well. So either you can legally download the audio book or they have a CD packed with them. And in that way, you can find more uh, reading, which you can also listen to at the same time. Now, have you read any readers that you think uh, were awesome and you would recommend to the group? Write it down the title of it, if you can still remember. Believe it or not, the first reader I read uh, was back in 1994. It was my second year of learning English and that was the very first reader I read and it's my favorite ever since. It was level two, but almost the easiest level. And it was an Oxford uh, publication. It, uh, the title was The Monkey's Paw. It was a crime story but written in such a good style so that I could understand it. I didn't have to use a dictionary, although it gave me sometimes a hard time, but I figured out the words from the context. And I loved the story so much that it made me uh, love reading books in English. And this is why you should also try reading a graded reader or readers in English. Now, uh, my last tip is uh, to write down words that you 
think about right now in Hungarian, but you don't know them in English. What do I mean? Uh, when I was younger, I used to carry a small notebook and a pencil with myself. And uh, while I was traveling, you know, we didn't uh, scroll Facebook then, but we were looking out of the window or reading books or talking to friends. Uh, so while um, traveling and looking around the city, uh, I tried to name the things around me. And if I didn't know the thing, I wrote it down in Hungarian to my notebook so that I could remember the word when I went home. And when I arrived home, I looked it up in the dictionary and oh, I could use it the next day because I was really interested what that word meant, which I saw around me. I was motivated to learn that new word. Now, look around your room. Do you know each and every word, what it means? If you don't, then that's a good uh, way to learn new vocabulary. Uh, when you go next time by car or by public transport, look around you and try to name the things around you. I'm sure there will be tens or hundreds of words that you don't know in English, but you would still need it need later, right? Okay, uh, but I think in studying vocabulary the golden rule is whatever the method uh, is that try to spend uh, at least 20 minutes a day each and every day by studying new vocabulary or uh, studying grammar or whichever other field of, on, on language learning. Um, so uh, spend some time on language learning every day and even if it's just 20 minutes uh, it will do you good and you will get better day by day. I promise. Now these are my three tips. Tell me in the comments which tips are you going to start to use today. Is it uh, making sentence cards instead of word cards or studying uh, words from a vocabulary book? So making sentence cards or listening to the audiobook while reading? Or is it going to be taking notes of the things that you don't know in English? Um, which one will you use today? Now, I will have time for the comments now. Let's see them. Oh, Zoli uh, remembers uh, his first reader, or the, the best reader he's ever read. It's uh, by Oxford University Press, The Bronte Story. Oh, I would, I would read it. I'm interested. I also read Jane Eyre. Uh, uh, yes, okay. Uh, Joseph said that the old school language education is one of the biggest crime against mankind, okay, <laughs> including Fiat Multipla, <laughs> that's funny, um, you know, uh, you you wrote several times that you had, I, I think you were the one who had uh, a not very good English teacher back in the day, and you know, you know, there are some good teachers and there are bad teachers, it doesn't matter if it's today or 20, 30 years ago, Today, there are also lots of bad teachers and also good teachers. Uh, you were not lucky enough to meet them, I think. But I hope you, you found your way. And I think you found your way, Jeff, because your English is good enough. I can see it in your comments. Right. Um, okay. Um, which tip are you going to use today? Are you going to use uh, the sentence card tip, which I suggested you? Uh, because I also learn with sentence cards. I, I know lots of you don't know these cards. Um, I'm, I'm a great fan of uh, Tanuló Kártyák because uh, they are not uh, word cards, but sentence cards. I guess if you look up Tanuló Kártyák, then you will find a website on www.angoltanitás.hu. It's not my page, but I truly recommend these instant uh, sentence cards 
so you don't have to write them for yourself. Okay, I don't get any money from this, believe me, but I want to suggest you some good uh, methods. Uh, let's look at this one. It's an instant friends uh, start word sentence card and it says this never would have happened on one side as Shoshem történt volna meg on the other side. Complete sentence to, says to study. I love them and uh, they not only have one pack of sentence cards but they have like 10, 20 in different topics. You should look uh, look them up uh, on their website or on the net. They are absolutely amazing. If you want to have more tips, then please visit my blog, blog.englishexpander.net. And if you want to have more tips on video, then uh, join my three-part video course in englishexpander.net. And yes, see you next week because next week I'm going to give you some more tips uh, which will help you increase your English and expand your English. Take care. Bye.